Hi everyone, welcome to Poetology. I have just come back from a trip to New York where I visited family I hadn't seen for two years and I got to discover New York City for the first time and a bit of the Hudson River and basically I decided, even though I didn't have a lot of time to dedicate to this, to visit two bookshops while in New York and the first one is the Astoria bookshop in the Queens and the second one is the Strand, the very well-known, very large bookshop in Manhattan where if you like to check out literary events on YouTube you might have seen several speakers because they have a lot of authors there who talk about their work and it's a really large bookshop and a big pleasure to visit. So I took some footage of these two places and will take you through them. The first one is the Astoria bookshop. You can see me on the street getting ready to go inside and here is the bookshop. I walked in and here is what it looks like. It's a nice little cozy bookshop where they have a very good selection of books and I paid particular attention on their collection of fiction and also their gender section was really good with a lot of books on feminism, a lot of books on gender. I thought it was a delightful section with a lot of interesting titles. They had very nice display shelves that um, unfortunately I thought I'd taken footage of them and I messed it up, so I only have this one picture. And here you can see the poetry section, which is sizable for a small bookshop. It's a pretty good selection. I found When the Light of the World Was Subdued, a song came through, which I've shown here before in my video on indigenous poetry anthologies. I also saw some American anthologies. While I was in the US I was quite interested in maybe reading some American poets. Here is We Want It All, the anthology of trans poetics that I've mentioned several times before as well. And the latest Native American poetry anthology called Living Nations, Living Words, which is edited by Joy Harjo as well. Um, I don't have it yet but I was very happy to see it on this shelf. Another Native American author, probably the most well-known, is the novelist Louise Erdrich. She writes poetry as well, if you don't know, I love her poetry too. Here was a signed copy of her latest novel, The Sentence, which I didn't buy for myself, but later I got a copy for my sister for her birthday. I think she was very happy about that. I can't wait to read it, but now I don't have my own copy yet. Because I finally opted for Ruth Odziki, The Book of Form and Emptiness. While I was in New York, I finally got to read A Tale for the Time Being, which I'd had on my shelves. I bought a second-hand copy years ago. I've had it on my shelves for ages and I hadn't read it, and while I was traveling, it was a good opportunity to just read a book. I read it fairly slowly, I took my time, but I really loved it, so I thought I would get the latest one. And it's also a signed copy, which is always a good thing. I think it's a nice memory of being in New York, so I went for it. Even though it's a big, bulky book, I decided to get it and take it home with me. <laughs> now, the Strand is another affair. It is much, much larger and I did not see the entire place. I just selected a few sections that I thought you might be interested in, the ones that were particularly exciting for me. So here it is in Manhattan, old, rare and new books. Let's go inside. When you get in, you can see all these displays with so many books. It's quite overwhelming in a good way. Here is a random selection of the titles that are on display at the Strand currently. And here you can see all the bookshelves at the back, uh, which give you an indication of how much there is to browse in the bookshop. I was, as always, interested in poetry, so I had to ask where the poetry section was and it is impressive. 
you can see it here, it starts there on the left and then goes on and on and on and on all the way almost to the end of these shelves on that wall. So much to browse, I was slightly overwhelmed. Here were the anthologies and this was the display bookshelves for poetry. Now let's look at some titles, we've got Birthday Girl with Possum, we've got The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot, Selected Verse by Lorca, and Poems of Rebellion, Fire and Beauty by Nikita Jill. Here are more American poetry anthologies, including some of the ones we saw earlier. Joy Harjo's Norton edition again. I got excited by the style and usage section because it has so many how to write books like The Art of Creative Research by Philip Gerard, Charles Bukowski on writing, Wild Mind Living the Writer's Life by Natalie Goldsberg, The Writing Habit by David Huddle, which I didn't buy but I think I will acquire. It has a section on composing poetry on a computer. Who doesn't need that? A more recent title, Everyone Has What It Takes by William Kenoa. More titles were Uncreative Writing by Kenneth Goldsmith, The Art of Voice by Tony Hoagland, and Steering the Craft by Ursula Le Guin. What I did get for myself was simply a cup. There were so many to choose from. I drink a lot of tea, so I thought a cup is always good. Here are some random selections of their cups. I got this one, 18 miles of books, with these very pleasing black and red contrasts. I didn't have enough time to get lost in the strand as much as I would have liked. It's huge. There are four levels, including the underground level. I only browsed the main floor. I came across other bookshops in various places that looked great, had a very deliberate, careful selection of books displayed. I didn't have enough time to fully investigate that because I was so busy doing other things with my siblings. If I ever go back, I will investigate more of them. And this can give you an idea of what to do if you go to New York. I hope you enjoy it as a little snippet of my trip there. And I hope to see you again very soon. Bye!